Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Just this morning, the former Bahati member of parliament, Kimani Gunjiri, has announced a shocking statement while appearing in a television interview, in a radio interview today, that he's going, or rather he's no longer a member of the UDA party, and in the coming elections, he's not going to be part of the UDA leaders that are going to contest using the ticket. This is coming at a critical time when the ruling party is planning to conduct grassroots elections. And I think Kimani Ngujiri is saying he's not going even to contest for any political party position in Nakuru County. Appearing in the Spice FM, Kimani Ngunjiri is jilted. The lawmaker is jilted that Nakuru Senator Susan Kihika, who is the senior most UDA leader in the county, decided to take all the appointed positions and nominated her close family members in the county government and other critical positions. And all those other leaders and politicians who fought for the soul of UDA party in the county are actually left um, in the dark. So they've been left out as Susan Kehika took over all the positions that could be given to other UDA party. And I want to believe, and I, I want us to be in the, in, the, in the spirit of being objective, I don't believe that it's true that the first qualification of giving someone a job should be membership of a party. I, I think we need to put that very clear. The membership of a party is not one of qualifications of someone to become, um, uh, to get a position. However, our constitution is also very clear on chronism and nepotism. There is a silent uh, clause on regional balance and rather equity, gender and other aspects. So it's also not ethical or rather it's also unethical for someone to appoint his close or her close members into positions because apart from it being unethically wrong, it also brings up the conflict of interest. And the conflict of interest is one of the challenges that affect the service delivery in this country. So Kimani Ganjiri has spoken um, outrightly about some of this development. And the national, he's also saying, even the national government, which is in, being led by President William Ruto, has also left out the leaders that fought for the soul of the party. And without much ado, I wanted to listen to Kimani Gunjiri's interview today in Spice FM. I was a candidate. Mm -hmm. And I want to say in this media and everybody in Kenya to hear me, I'm not in UDA myself. Yeah. I'll never wear yellow uh -huh. anymore. What happened? Because happened? I've been with Moi. I've been with Kibaki. I know the structure of, 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 of election. I know how the people should put people together. Mm. I know how you should get your light on the nation. It did not work. Let me tell you, like Nakuru, they did something with the governor there. Seven family of, the, of his family, the, the, the sister, the grandchild, the nini, they gave nomination. My people, like in Bahati, they got nothing who supported the, the UDA. Mm. So for the UDA, let's not talk about it here for me, because I'm not part and parcel for the UDA. I will support the president. I will go on either independent or any other party. But not in UDA. Iyo ni matope, iyo ni shida, ambaya ikombele yetu. It's a big problem. Because, so in which party let me ask you, my brother, <laughs> you know how I worked for UDA. Mm. Mm. You want to see when we are getting the, uh, 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 the, the director of something, we go and get Western when he was in the other party. There. We, don't, we are not there ourselves. Who did this work for UDA? Why are we not there? Are we not capable? So before we remove ourselves, we are already removed. Before we remove ourselves, uh -huh. already we are removed. We are nowhere. Someone like me, they are appointing people, they are giving people position. Where am I? I was almost dying fighting for, for, for the UDA. But I will tell my brother one thing when I live about the people. Please, you are young and I know you are looking us for the position. <laughs> Leadership is not a joke. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you when you get to it, it's like young people <laughs> when they say when they get married, how they do, I'll buy my girlfriend, I'll buy my wife a car, I'll build a house, okay. I'll do all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. I can see mom looking for me very seriously. <laughs> I don't really can come out. <laughs> But when you get there, it becomes difficult. <laughs> Let me tell you, as an old person, let's not compare Kenya and Haiti. Please, let's don't. Because the issues you see in Haiti, let me tell you, we can't compare with Kenya. Let's be happy that this country, we have peace, even if with some pockets which are not doing very well, but we cannot compare ourselves with that country. God is with us and we should actually appreciate. I think you are young and 207, Maybe you're not finished your education or a degree of law. <laughs> I was on campus. I, you're the campus. Yes. And I was there, especially in a school where you were affected so much. Mm. I've, I lost 14 of my relatives. Oh, Paul. Just because of stupid things of politics incitement. And our people died. Up to now, they were displaced, some people. They are, we have not settled those people up to now. We have not completed. So... I would say that uh, the point I would, I would like maybe to agree with you and support you, and there's a message we need to repeat and to repeat and to repeat again, who elected these leaders who are there? Who elected them, see? Who elected them, P? Who elected governors and who elected those people? The problem starts with Wanjiku. When he is given money, bribed, eh? he just go and vote. In a different way. Some go and vote in the party line. Some go and vote on the tribal line. So if Wajiku want to shape this country, he can do it. But because he is like now in our place, in, in Bahati, mm. they were given, the, 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 my comrade was buying the vote with the 2,000. You give him ID, he give you 2,000. So you have sold your freedom, all your hope, 2,000 for five years. Mm. So now you are complaining. What are you complaining for? Eh? What are you complaining for? You, you did it yourself. So we need also to push down, even if we say there is a problem somewhere, mm. but also, Wanjiko, please, we are all preparing ourselves. <laughs> you go and elect people in the UDA. <laughs> you go and elect them in the other parties, and you make sure that hey, this is the party. You sell the party. You not sell individual. I want to urge people. Elect somebody. Mm. Forget about the party. The party will take you nowhere. Elect the person you know. He can stand for you. He can die for you. And I will support you. I don't know where you are standing. So I can see how, how you <laughs> perform. <the> <laughs> now, so many, um, th this, this statement looks, and his body language, looks a man that, as much as he tries to be very objective, but it's also very clear that he's a bit angry. You know, is a bit jilted of the latest development. Why? Remember, he was picked as CS in charge of lands. And when I was analyzing that in, our, in this channel, I said that they were picked 50. At the, country, at the time, the country was actually criticizing the president for ballooning the wage bill. The country has been struggling to manage our wage bill, but at the same time, we are creating more unneeded positions like CAS. And the court termed those positions unconstitutional. We are seeing another effort to reintroduce <clears throat> those positions through the parliament route. But it might not be, it, they might not be 50. Because some of those who are appointed as CAS have been absorbed in other areas. I saw Josh Mangi. The Kisi deputy governor has been taken as an ambassador, I think, outside the country. We've seen uh, um, Isaac Mahura, who was also one of the among the contenders in uh, among the nominees in this position, has been handed over um, a position as the government spokesperson. So the president has President Tutu has tried to make some readjustment, readjustments, and rather absorb some members. But the veteran politician from Nakuru is in the dark, and in real sense. What he's actually saying is that he's been left out, he's not been given a job, even despite the fact that he fought for the party. In Nakuru, the ex-MP has also been complaining about Susan Kehika's influence in that war memorial hospital, and even formed a movement known as G7 in Nakuru. And G7 allegedly supposed to help fight for the soul of uh, that 
region. So there's so many developments, there's so many political developments that are happening now in terms of what, uh, why Kimani Ngujiri is actually crying out. And it is not yet clear. Is it really objective that, is he annoyed or angry that he's not been given a job? Or is he just part of the team complaining genuinely because UDA party has not gotten its objective? So I want us to look at this further. But before I do that, I want to humbly request you to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and like our videos. And thank you very much for supporting us. Thank you very much for supporting our videos and even supporting our charity programs. This April, we will start our program uh, project tomorrow on Thursday and we still urge you to help be part of that great initiative. Now, um, I want us to look at this holistically because in real sense, there is something that is not adding up here. He's not the only one. There are so many other MPs or so many other leaders that campaigned for William Bruto and they've not been able to, be, to get some jobs. Number one, this statement is a big worry to William Bruto because even as we speak, the UDA party is at advanced stages of doing their grassroots elections. Now let me tell you, disgruntled members of the party that are walking out, like the, uh, Kimani Gujiri, is actually representing dissenting voices. And this direction is, 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 you know, is pointing at what really needs to be done. You know, what really needs to be done. I want to say this. I, no one would even remember, no one would even think that Kimani Gujiri would one day cry out that William Bruto has abandoned him. Do you remember? These are the politicians. Sometimes politicians just need to, sometimes the, you give the devil their deal. Politicians sometimes just get their, you know, know their reward. Kimani Gujiri called Uhuru Kenyatta all sorts of names simply because Uhuru Kenyatta was supporting Raila Odinga. You know, sometimes the country, we, we cannot forget as a country. He called Uhuru Kenyatta all names. And Huru Kenyatta's only problem was because Huru Kenyatta supported Ray Lodinga. So he would call press briefings in the middle of the shamba, in, in his office, anywhere. Whenever President Huru Kenyatta says something, we always come up and have uh, a rebuttal against Uhuru Kenyatta. Now, this is happening. It is creating an impression very well that abandoned Uda team should then defect from the party. How many? And... I, I think I got some, um, uh, some tea, you know, some, some gossip last week that there were some three members of uh, MPs, some, 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 some former MPs that were in media party that even left some WhatsApp group, critical WhatsApp group of UDA MPs. And that was largely explained that some even left because that group had been there. It was a bit of some networking. They were supposed to support their peers who were elected or those who were in cabinet. But I think it was also networking for them to get some extension deals, you know, some tenders here and there. But they left. Why? Because there is voices of dissent. And what William Bruto is dealing with is a movement of leaders who fought for UDA party and for him and they were abandoned. So what Kimani Ngujiri uh, simplifies here, signifies here, is an exodus from the party. Number two, I want to be very objective and I want to be very realistic here. I am not seeing Kimani Gunjiri as a man who wants to leave UDA party. I am seeing a man who is threatening so that he can be given a job. Look, what is he crying out? What he's crying about is about a job. He's not crying about the, the job. In fact, He's not talking about the grand betrayal of the hustler. What would be expected is someone who is saying, you know, we promised the people this and we didn't deliver. If someone wants to leave you with such a statement, I know it's, a very, it's not a very strong narrative. But if one, someone leaves with such a narrative, you'll give yourself with the accolades that you indeed did something. But on this one, I am not seeing him leaving with the right narrative that... 
I fought for the party, then I've not been given a job. Lastly, other, another one here is, is, a very, is a big warning to William Ruto. This problem that Kimani Mujeri is talking about in Nakuru, where Susan Kihika took his campaign, her campaign members, and gave them jobs and left out some UDA surgeons, it is very clear that it's happening across the countries. And one of the things, one of the ways to hold the party together is to absorb. You know, I realized even in ODM, um, the, the governor, the governor, Humabe governor, absorbed Priscilla Nyokabwe. Humabe governor, um, Gladys Wanga, gave some job to Priscilla Nyokabwe. And people were asking, what? Priscilla Nyokabwe comes from Nyeri, but what is he doing in Omabe? What is she doing? What was she doing in Omabe? There was some job absorption. Why? Because you hold grip of your team. And I think... Um, the state of steam in Ruto Handas must be very careful because the president is going to face a betrayal or tag. With these defections, a tag is being created that you have betrayed the members that stood with you. Thank you, guys. I'm leaving you out with a snippet of our activity, our charity event that we did last, uh, I think that was our third. I've, I've been trying to do series of projects. We've done 10 projects. So the project we are going to do in April is the 11th. So I did a compilation. That video is in this channel. You can check. I think it's the trailer in this channel. But on this one, I'm going to give you our third and fourth projects. We did 10 projects. So this is third and fourth. Kindly watch. Thank you. My name is Steven Otieno. Steven Otieno. Yes. OK. Um, Steven, eh? You told me that um, your wife has a challenge. It's not someone is it's somewhere detained in the hospital. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you take us through what exactly happened or where did it start? It became the most, uh, let me not say challenging, but the most emit emotive after this because some gentleman called me. I remember it was on a Saturday evening. It was called Laban. And they told me he wanted me to meet another gentleman who was known as a Stephen. So Stephen's wife was again stuck in the hospital. She, she's known at Mercy, but, but Mercy were ready. And um, she came, I actually called Stephen home and she himself, he actually explained what had happened as you can see here. And what was so emotive to me about this is because imagine Stephen because the wife was detained in the hospital and could not be released, was given the child. Um, he used to take the child every day to Kenyatta Hospital, the breast is being breath, breastfed by the mother, then it turns back with the home. And that is why it turns, uh, returns home with the child. And that is why even by the time I called him, he came with the child because he had just come from the hospital. And I said, well, um, I needed to. This was the following year, that was 2023. And um, we really came out. I, I remember the bill was 78, was it? I think 78,000. And um, within one week, we were able to secure the release of Mercy. The day I went to the hospital in Kenyatta, and this was the second project I was going to, um, then we were going to discuss someone, someone from Kenyatta. She came to me and um, she nearly broke down. Then we went home. And this is their place. The video is seeing this is their home. They were just home. This is their place. And um, she also spoke about her detention in Kenyatta Hospital. Okay, kwa majina mi naitua Masi. Masi nani? Masi Waridi. Yes. Ningependa kushukuru sana kwa yale mazuri mmenifanyia na odo aikukua ni raisi sana hila kwa upendo na yote imetendeka yani sijui ni seme nini kwa sababu naisi ni furaha nyingi sana moyoni mwangu naisi ni kani machozi na nitoka kwa mengi mmenifanyia how was it ikiwa kwamba hauko karibu na mtoto? Unaona sasa mwishoni ume ume, ume karibu na songa karibu na mtoto? Singeweza kulala kwa sababu kwa ile hali ambayo nilikuwa napitia pale hospitali. 
usiku wote ninge yani usingizi haikuji kwa sababu nilikuwa na hisi uchungu sana maziwa inatililika inaniuma kichwa inaniuma sana and must see really and by the way let me tell you um, i wanted to see um, just last week they sent me a photo of that child when you to you can see the boy has grown uh, the boy has really grown uh, they're grateful for what we did because it was never about me it was about um, it was about us as a team but when i get when i got there I realized because steven did have a job he used to do motorbike but because the wife was sick could not go could not attend to that job the motorbike belonged to someone else so the owner of the motorbike had taken that motorbike so yes we were home we have done some budget for them but there was no rent there was no food and there's no way we could feed this family you know what happened we decided that we will not stop at Massey's discharge but we'll get a motorbike for Steven a big testimony here this is what happened after one week Hi guys, uh, Sante Sara, we are here. This is a Bajan shop, so we are permanently putting it to a closure. Here, I am here with Steven and Masi. So, we finally bought the motorbike here. It's a new motorbike, and uh, we bought it here. Um, just a bit of me, I'm interacting with motorbike for the first time. <laughs> so, here the helmet, yes. So these are the two helmets. These are this one. Um, these ones are see, see. reflectors. These are reflectors. Yeah, see, Julie, so I'm also aligning now. This one is for this is umbrella. So this is very important. Okay, to for Nigeria, you can still work. And um, yes, so that is a brand new. Uh, I'll give uh, Steven our ongelation. Then also Masi is here. Here is the paper of 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 Sasa nataka niingie kazi, nitaingia kazi bila stress, piki piki ni ya cash, hakuna kulipa loan, nimefurahi sana, santeni sana. Piki piki ina gani? Hii box ya BMW 125cc. So this is to Now Masi is here. And today Masi is very strange. <laughs> Yes guys, so we are putting this for closure, we ended it, we managed to buy a motorbike and also another cash transfer that we are going to make and also insurance, yeah. yes, so we are also going to get insurance, we will be get to get insurance, but now I think it's set to work, yeah, I tell you, sorry. so we will have everything, me, you want to put the city yeah, 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 oh. so, so guys, thank you very much, we did this, and we decided that uh, we need to make it different, so that's why I'm putting on this. Example here, I'm saying Bold Charity Network. So we're going to create a big network to make sure that not just it doesn't end with Steve and Massey, with Steve and Massey, and many, many more. We shall walk this talk together. So,